In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create dynamic blocks in AutoCAD 2015 for the Mac. Blocks in general are a really great way to work efficiently when you have elements that occur multiple times in a drawing, such as doors and windows in an architectural floor plan. Dynamic blocks make it so that you can have different variations to those things, so I'm going to show you how to make windows of different widths and four different wall thicknesses and doors of different sizes all created from one block instance. Start a new file, use the acad.dwt template, set your units, I will be using architectural units, and then we're ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and create a window. We want to be working on layer 0. I'm going to use the rectangle command to create a window. Start typing REC for rectangle, specify a first point, and then if I hit the down arrow I can see my additional options or I can look in my command line and see the additional options. I'll hit D for dimensions. I would like to type in 36 inches for the length, 6 inches for the width, and then I have to click one more time in order to set the orientation. If you can't see your rectangle on the screen, you can zoom extends, Z, Enter, E, Enter, in order to fit that into your window. The next thing we'll do is we'll actually draw the frame and the glass. So I'm going to explode this rectangle for now and use the offset command. And let's make the frame one and a half inches off of the edge of the window and then we'll use the line command with my midpoint O snap. If your midpoint O snap is not on, come down to your object snap menu, select midpoint. Okay, and that's going to be the basic window. Now we're ready to create the block. The command is block. Let's go ahead and call this window. select our objects and select a base point. Everything else can be left as it is and click the button to create a block. Now you'll see if you select this object it has been turned in to what appears to be a group. One of the benefits of th using blocks is that if I had multiple instances of this block and I needed to make a modification, I could simply double click on the block. Let's say I wanted to use the stretch command and make the window frame larger. Turn my ortho on by another inch and a half. We'll do the same thing. S for the stretch command. I'm going to hit C to make a crossing window and then I'd like to move one and a half inches, click save and close, and you'll see that every instance of the block also updates according to those changes. So that's the benefit of a block, but now let's look at how we can actually make this a dynamic block. So once again go ahead and double click to open the block editor. You can also right mouse click and select block editor. You know you're in the block editor because the screen, the background of the screen will turn gray. And the first thing we want to do is add some linear parameters. AutoCAD does actually have some parametric modeling capability. So let's go ahead and select linear from the list. And we'll add one linear parameter that's the overall width. When asked about the number of grips, go ahead and just hit enter for two. And then let's add one more linear dimension that will be the wall thickness. And again, for now, let's set those to be two. Two grips, hit enter. Click on the first linear parameter, distance one, and you'll need to use your property inspector to make some modifications. Make sure that all of the properties are shown, not just the essentials. Scroll down in this menu until you come to the 
portion that says property labels. Let's rename this to be window width and we can put the same thing in the distance description. Let's also select the distance to linear parameter and we'll again scroll to the property labels and this one let's call wall thickness and wall thickness and then just click anywhere in the screen or hit the escape key in order to deselect. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and close and let's go back and look at our block. You'll notice that even though we gave it those linear parameters and we can see those parameters when we select on the block, we can't edit them yet. So let's go back into our block editor and in the Mac version, every parameter that you want to be dynamic needs to be accompanied by an action. And this is a little bit different from the Windows version. So let's work with wall thickness first. I would like to make it so that I can adjust the wall thickness um, for a range of wall thicknesses between 4 inches and, say, 12 inches. So I want to use a stretch action. This center menu here are the actions. So I'm going to use the stretch action. First select the parameter. Specify the parameter point, which will be this upper corner of the window. Specify the stretch window. I want to draw a window that gets all of the end points of the lines that I wish to stretch and then select the objects. Again I want to select those same objects. I'll just use a crossing window, hit enter. One more thing before we check to make sure this is working. For my wall thickness parameter I only want to have this one grip on this corner. I would like this corner to stay stationary so I'm going to select the wall thickness parameter, scroll all the way down to the bottom of my properties and where it says number of grips I'm going to change that to one and then click save. Save the block and let's close the block editor. Now you'll see when I come back into my main model space window I have a little arrow here and if I did it correctly I should be able to drag that arrow around. You'll notice though that there are some things that are not working properly. For example the glass I might want it to always be centered within that wall thickness so let's go and work on that. Double click to reactivate the block editor. Let's add another linear parameter. This time we'll go from the midpoint to the midpoint of our glass and we can place it anywhere. Let's enter the number of grips as zero. I don't actually need to, to manually modify this parameter. We're going to do something kind of fancy with this one. Select the distance. We can simply name this glass location. And then scroll all the way to the bottom. And I don't necessarily need to show this parameter, so I'm going to uncheck show the parameter. And I'm going to check chain action. So chain action means that I can link the behavior of this parameter to another parameter. And the next thing I need to do is add an action to this new parameter. And this time I'm going to use a move action. Select move, select my parameter, my point will be this midpoint of the glass, and then I want to select the glass. The glass is the object that I would like to move, and hit enter. Now I would like to select that new move action that I just created, so highlight it, and then once again come over into my properties inspector until I get to the area called overrides. And what I would like to do is set this a distance override to 0.5. So that means that whatever the distance is that controls the motion, this is only going to move half of that distance. So put that in. 
And then one last step is that I need to go back to my original wall thickness stretch action, right mouse click, and now I'm going to modify my selection. It's asking me again to specify the first corner of my stretch frame. Select my objects to add. So this time I'm I want to select my glass location parameter to add to this stretch action and hit enter. And let's hit save and see if this works. Save the changes, close the block editor. So now what should happen is as I move the wall thickness that the glass is staying in the midpoint of that wall thickness. That appears to be working great. This would be a good time to save your file. The next thing I'd like to do is put another linear parameter which controls the overall width of the window. So we'll double click again. Here we have our linear parameter and we are going to give it another stretch command. So I'm going to select stretch, select my parameter, specify the stretch point, the first corner of the stretch frame. I want to make sure to get the frame of the window and the end point of the glass. Same thing when I select the objects. Hit enter to finish selecting the objects. Again, for the width of the window, I don't need a control at this end. We're just going to make it so that it, that point is fixed and the width will adjust from this end. So I want to select that linear dimension, scroll down to the bottom, change my number of grips to 1. We see that the, the grip here disappeared. That's good. One other thing I'd like to do here is we can set some limitations on the increments with which this window size can be resized. So instead of making it so that I can make the windows any dimension, let's say I would like the windows to only be scaled in 6 inch increments. So with the linear parameter selected, I want to come down to where it says value set, select an increment, I'll make my distance increment 6 inches. Perhaps the minimum window size can be 12 inches and the maximum maybe is 5 feet. OK. Hit Escape to deselect. Hit Save. Save the changes. Close the block editor. And now I should be able to drag this and it only will snap to 6 inch increments between 1 foot and 5 foot widths. And it looks like that's all working well. The frame and the glass are moving along with, along with the overall dimension. And just to demonstrate the power of this one more time, if I had multiple instances of that block, they could be at different sizes. And yet, if I made a modification to one of them, such as thinning up that frame again, I can hit save, save the changes, close the block editor, and all of the instances, even though they have different parameters, have updated accordingly. Again, this is a good time to save your file. To complete this tutorial, let's make a door block. Again, I want to continue working on layer 0. Again, I will use the rectangle command. Specify a first corner. Hit D for dimensions. This time I would like my door to be 1.5 inches wide by 3 feet. And I will click one more time to set the direction. And then I want to make an arc. A-R-C is the command. I want to hit the down arrow and hit center or just type C for center. The center point of the arc will be this lower point of the door. Start point is the upper edge of the door and then with my ortho on or hold the shift key to click and make that perfect 
90 degree arc. Layer 0 has some special powers, which means that later I can put one of these blocks on a different layer and it will assume the properties of that layer. I want to do an override though and make it so that the door swing is always a very thin line. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the door swing to red while leaving everything else zero and leaving the color by layer. I'll make the block. I'm going to call this door. You know my names are not very descriptive. Select my objects. Pick my base point. Let's select this corner of the door and create the block. Again, let's go into the block editor and add a couple of parameters. I'm going to make a linear parameter that goes from the inside corner of the door to the edge of the door swing arc. Let's make one grip and let's make one more linear parameter from that same lower point to the top edge of the door and for this one we'll make zero grips. Let's rename these. The lower linear parameter I'm going to call door width and for this one I'll just call it door. Okay, we're going to apply an action to the door width which is a scale action select the parameter, select the object which will just be the arc, hit enter, let's go ahead and hit save and close the block editor just to see what happens. So now if I move that the arc is scaling, great, double click to go back in and for the door panel itself we'll add a stretch action, select the parameter, select this upper left point of the door, my stretch frame, select the objects, I just want to select the rectangle, not the arc, just the rectangle. Okay, I need to make the parameter of the door stretch linked with the door width, so click on the door parameter scroll down to the bottom of the properties, uncheck show in properties, and check chain action. Notice that this little red symbol appears. Now I need to go back to my original scale, modify my selection set, and add my door parameter to the scale. Right click when I'm finished and let's hope that this works. Beautiful. One last thing I could do would be to set some fixed dimensions for the door. So again if I select my door width parameter, scroll down to my value set, this time let's make a list of potential door sizes. Maybe we have a four foot door and maybe we have a five foot door. That's a pretty big door. Click OK. Click Save. Save the changes. Close the block editor. And again now you'll see that I can snap only to those specified instances. I can also scroll to the bottom of my properties and simply select those dimensions from a pull down list. The last thing I'd like to show you is how you can import these into, say, your floor plan drawing or into another drawing. The easiest way is that you can simply control C to copy and control V or command V to paste into another file. I can also use the insert command to select my block and add, it, add additional instances to my file or to a new file. And that's it for this tutorial.